Okay, I'm gonna try something different today. I'm gonna try to photograph a bottle that is like crazy, it has this pattern. It actually looks quite cool. I have no idea what I'm gonna do, what the final product's gonna be. So I'm just gonna experiment with the flashes and see what I can get. Okay, I'm gonna show you that bottle. It's a bit, it's a bit of a weird one and it has a lot of texture. And I actually don't know what I can do with this. Look at this cool bottle it's a champagne bottle so we're going to try to get some photographs and as i said there's nothing concrete i'm just going to make it up as i go Okay, so the setup is very simple. It's gonna be two flashes, and I am gonna be trying to first work on my key light to see how it is. And I think from that shot that I just did, I think I'm gonna actually try to move the camera and get the product at an, an angle, just to see if I can get that reflection maybe in the ground or something, because it has a nice texture to it, like broken glass or something like that. So I'm gonna try to work with that and see what I can get. Okay, I think that angle might kind of work. I'm gonna to try to tilt the bottle a little bit and see if I can play around with that. I got something that I'm kind of happy with. I'm going to try to put tin foil behind the bottle so the reflections bounce a little bit better. Let's see how that works. Okay, I'm happy with that. It was it took a bit to try to get that tin foil aligned correctly. We're now gonna try to work the second line, which is gonna give a light to separate the product from the background. 125 uh, of a second, I saw 100 F11. So that's my settings. And my main light is uh, AD200 and it's at half power at the moment. So let's test the other one and try it out. I'm gonna actually use a modifier for that back flash. I don't have a snout, so I just have a honeycomb grid and I can attach it with a Velcro to my flash head. So I, I can focus that light in the back of a product and not kind of have it too much spilling out. Let's see. I'm gonna try something different. We put CTO in that flash in the background. Let's see if that makes a difference. It's gonna probably give me a, a glow to my flash, like orange glow. It might go with the bottles, a kind of branding colors. I'm gonna import the photos to Lightroom check them out, see if my focus is correct and, and see what minor changes I can make to the setup. And then I'm gonna begin doing my light painting because I only have one uh, kind of key light. I'm gonna to have to use the same flash to rotate so I can get a perfect exposure all around the bottle. I might use a bounce card, let's see if that works. I just don't wanna lose the, the background lighting. So if I bounce too much light around, that might not work also. So. Okay, now that I have the product exactly when I want it to be, and I'm happy with the light, the general lighting, I need to make sure not to touch the camera at all. So I'm gonna just be releasing the camera through the tethering tool. Just so when I'm composing the images, there's no slight change because that's, that's gonna introduce a, an extra step you need to fix in post. 
and and it has happened to me so it's not an ideal situation to be in so the best is if you have a radio trigger or a wireless trigger not touch the camera once your composition is finished unless you're going to stack focus or something like that but you need to just be very careful not to push move the camera around because then again your images won't align uh, when you're editing them after the fact so i'm happy where we are right now uh, and i'm going to take my main exposure which is going to give us the frame and then i'm going to move my key light around to try to work in the label once i get a perfect exposure in the label uh, then I'm going to work in the actual bottle. So I'm going to try to bounce my backlight inside with color the bottle uh, inside the tin foil that's behind the bottle actually. I'm going to try to bounce the, the backlight through the tin foil and make refractions inside the bottle with that orange glow. And then I'm going to edit that photo of the bottle with the background and that should be it. So hopefully um, it will all work well and let's just jump into that now. We're going to now jump to Lightroom. I've imported my photos and I've made a selection. Uh, I only have two images that I'm going to work on just to make things simple and not complicate too much what we're going to do here. So I decided just to use two images, one in which I have my highlights kind of where I want them to be. This is again, no edits. This is straight out of the camera. That's how the photo looked and then I'm exposing the ambient, the overall image. And there's another one where I'm bouncing my flash just inside from this corner, inside the tin foil behind the bottle. And I'm bouncing it with a gel to match this orange color that the bottle has. I'm gonna use this exposure of the bottle combined with this exposure of the overall image to make one image that is gonna be the final product. So obviously there's a few things we need to work on. For example, we can Photoshop this out. Maybe we can work on removing the tear holes here and the top of the bottle. So that's gonna be easy to do in Photoshop. I have my two images selected. I'm gonna right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it again. Once you do this, Photoshop will automatically open and create one document with both files. So once in Photoshop, to make this tutorial a bit shorter, I'm just gonna show you uh, what I did in each step. Perhaps in the future, I can do a longer version in which I create the whole image uh, for you guys uh, as, a, as a video. But uh, if I would show you that, this probably took me like, you know, 15, 20 minutes to do the whole thing. So then it would be a very boring video. So I'm just gonna show you step by step uh, what I've done to create my final product. So this is the exposure uh, where I exposed for the overall scene. And then this is the exposure uh, combined with the inside exposure. So I'll show you this. If I, if I hold shift and click in the mask, I can turn it off. And you can see if I turn it on, I combine both images. So the mask and the overall image. So that's the combination of both the bottle exposure and the ambient exposure. I actually can show you the selection. That's the selection I did. That's what this mask is doing. So it's only allowing the bottle to go through. Okay, so we're gonna move on from that now. The next uh, kind of adjustment I did was with the label. I think the label was a bit dark and my bounce card was in, in the left was a bit far and it wasn't reaching properly to get a pe perfect exposure in the label. Ideally, I should have created a new image and pop the flash to get the proper exposure in the label. I just wanted to kind of speed things a little bit and make this faster. So I took a shortcut. I went with my dodge tool and corrected the exposure ever so slightly in the kind of label. Then I moved to the neck of the bottle with the dodge tool and just gave it that extra little pop the way i'm creating this uh, layers extra layers is i'm actually just click and drag in here the original background image and to the plus sign and it will create a new layer so it's a copy effectively of the background so i'm just going to delete that and once i have that copy 
I create a mask of the element that I want to edit in. For example, in this case, I have, let me select that, I have a mask of the, uh, the, the label. And then in the top one, I have a mask of the neck. Why do I have a mask of the, for example, the neck? And why don't I just edit directly into this image with my dodge tool, for example? Uh, if you were to do that, you be you have to be very careful with the edge. So most cases it doesn't really work. So the reason I have that mask on is if I turn it off, you'll see that glow where I use the dodge tool. So it's actually affecting the whole image. So I only want to see the actual top and neck of the bottle so i mask out everything out and just leave that section on so when i use my dodge tool it's only affecting that section that's the reason i have a mask and in each new layer once i'm happy with those kind of small detailed changes i went and applied the image and i went to filters camera raw and here in camera raw I did my correction that's why I didn't do any corrections in Lightroom I just use Lightroom in this case to import the images and keep them in my library but I didn't necessarily want to make any changes there you could make changes there I just didn't felt the need to make any changes there so once you're here this is exactly like Lightroom so what I did was Put a bit of a contrast i put texture clarity and i put a small vignette and saturation that's it not much to edit it was simple and small so i'm going to cancel that because i've already done this so the next thing you'll see is the tear holes so i actually made a selection here and cleaned those out and then the top ones out the last thing i did is i actually recropped my image because i'm going to use it in instagram and when you post it to Instagram, the best kind of aspect ratio is four by five. It uses a bigger portion of your screen. So the files look a little bit better than if you're doing 16 by nine or seven by six. So I think four by five is a better aspect ratio for Instagram. So I expanded the background on the sides and recrop the image. You might be wondering how I did that. So I'll show you that. That's actually very simple. You go and select the image where where you're going to get the background from. I'm going to go my selection tool. I'm going to click this like that. And what we're going to do is expand the background effectively. Right click layer via copy. You'll have a new layer here. You can't see it because it's underneath there. But with my selection tool, then I go, I can see my layer. I'm going to click on the lines and then right click distort and i can move this image if you hold ctrl down you'll be able to make small motion and make sure the lines align with the background there i think that works i'm going to hit enter to accept that change there's a small kind of gap here on the top i'm going to select the layer again click here create a new square right click layer via copy then i have a new layer selected then i'm going to go here selection tool and push this up hit enter and that's it so you repeat the process in the uh, right side and you got your image i'm actually just going to delete those and this is the final image as you can see it's a very minimalist photo uh, it's not too over complicated it's very easy to do it's just two exposures one exposure for the bottle the second exposure for the overall image maybe fixing the label and some other bits that you want to fix in photoshop and then you combine them together and you have a final product if you guys have any comments please leave them in the comment section below if you learned something then give it a like and i think that's it for now i'll see you next time Thank you.